it's New Year's Eve! Please oh. put that down. Please stop. No, it's terrible. We're really sorry if you already blew your ears out. That's our bad. But really, 2019 sort of feels like it wasn't a great year for AAA games compared to last year's Red Dead Redemption 2 and God of War and Spider-Man. Yeah, but then we started actually putting this list together and realized the variety of titles, just totally different, incredibly cool games is what makes 2019 shine. We had all the inside gaming staff vote on their top five games of 2019, but it is worth noting we cut off submissions in early November, so games like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Pokemon could not be included, sadly. Leave your rage in the comments. We're not, <laughs> we'll not take them here. Let's get to it. From fifth place to first place, here are our top five games of 2019 and why. Here we go! Coming in fifth, the mind-bending Control. Aside from some performance issues, we pretty much unanimously loved this game. It's probably our favorite story of the year. There is a fantastic protagonist is one thing to start out with. Jessie, her name was. Yes. Incredibly cool, but also the journey that she goes on is just, it's crazy. It's, it's mind-bending and mind-freaky. Mind Not in a way that is off-putting or too far gone. One really cool thing about Control's story is that it seems so mundane on paper. You become basically the president of a company. Crazy stuff just starts happening around you and the building you're in is a character of its own. Please go watch uh, our piece on the architecture of Control if that interests you further. Insane physics were also a really notable part of the game. Also uh, just running around the basic shelves of this office building is cool because paper just flies up around you. Yeah. Spin desks around and you actually feel like a superhero even when you're just walking around. Plus in combat because telekinesis never gets old. Yeah, it's a very, <laughs> very good outlet for those frustrated of living in corporate America. Just a, generally a very cool world to get to experience. There's DLC, which people are very excited about, for, but for the most part, the core game, aside from it not running great on, mostly on original <sighs> PS4 yeah. uh, at launch, is awesome. We did have some troubles with the map as well, but then as soon as I learned to actually read the signs in game, it changed the whole experience. Yes, yes, that's very worth pointing out because that map was straight up broken, yeah. but they give you a way around it in the game. It's basically why this game is our fifth. It's a little further down in the list because it did have some issues, but it's such a unique and unpredictable and I don't know, it's just so clearly crafted with love. Yeah, it's a unique new IP from a well-developed studio and that took a chance on this unknown quantity and now, you know, they've got an entire franchise ahead of them to iron out the kinks. So yeah, yeah. Control 2, we're looking forward to it. Uh, inject it directly into my mains. <laughs> okay, but to jump to our fourth game, I actually have to kick you out, so. Aww. Well, it's been fun. Have a happy new year. Goodbye, everyone. That's right, we're different people. Wow. We are both white and in our 20s. Fourth place is Obsidian's big old space RPG, The Outer Worlds. What an easy world to get lost in. There's just so much lore. And it really is out there. Yeah. yeah, so Outer Worlds is great. It's basically what if space capitalism extended and ruined everything that we touched. The thing that really got me lost in the Outer Worlds is there's so much to read, but there are so many differing opinions and it's almost like everyone you encounter, each individual character has their own lore. There are people with different religions and people have different political views and they just throw them all at you and present them to you and you can dive as deep as you want. And because it's so well written and it's well acted and it's also kind of funny, there's just a lot to consume. Yeah, it really is easy to get lost in it because every character feels fleshed out and every character that you meet feels like they could be a main character Absolutely. in the game, even if they are the most minor character or an optional party ad that you could just kill on the spot and never hear from again. And it presents you with really complex decisions you have to make, which mm -hmm. a lot of RPGs, it's pretty black and white. Like do the good thing or the bad thing. In this, it's a really nuanced, like you can do what you think is the good thing, but it'll have a lot of bad uh, unintended consequences. Well, which sometimes you try to do a good thing and it turns out to be the bad thing because that's how life works. And I get that for a video game, some people take issue with that. They're like, how dare you not let me make all of the good choices? But I think it's more compelling. I think it's, uh, it really pushes me to play differently. Cause like when I played Fallout, I really wanted to be nice. This forces me to, if I even try to play as a good person, it's complicated. Yeah. And I think that's a really cool, and also that's backed up by really tight shooting controls and really fun use of like the, basically their version of VATS, which I can't remember what it's called. Tactical time dilation. TTD. That's it. <laughs> I actually didn't like the shooting that much. So I played with very OP, single-handed weapons so I could kill everything as quickly as possible. Oh, I did use the melee weapons a lot, yeah. Right, but that's the thing that the game lets you do because it is an extremely extensive RPG. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things to really love about The Outer Worlds and it's also a pretty lengthy game, so good value for money. We love that. And it's on Game Pass. Even better value we for money. We love that also. We love it. Thanks, it Phil now. Spencer. <laughs> All right, I gotta spin you out of here, so. <laughs> Where oh am I? Third place. Oh God. The Resident Evil 2 remake. So good. Game of the year for me. 
person. All right, well, that, you, can't, you can't say that. That conflicts with the list. Sorry. It's, it's fine. But Resident Evil 2 was always a fantastic game, and the remake just adds more. So much more. It's extremely atmospheric. I yes. mean, I remember playing the demo of this game at E3 and being like, oh, this is extremely intense. It's very, very dark. They have good placement for zombies, so you yes. never really know when they're coming. There are things that will absolutely obliterate you, and you know it. And of course, because it's a Resident Evil game, you yeah. got to watch out for your inventory management, make sure you're prepared to go in a certain area. You're just constantly thinking, and it's not just a generic jump scare horror. And all, all the classic Resident Evil tropes are there. Like she said, everything is so strategically placed. One thing is the zombies do not go down, and I feel like that kind of adds to the horror element. When I played it, I know that I often yelled at zombies and was like, you stay down, god damn it. It's definitely tense, but yeah. that's also helped by really good graphics. It's a stunning oh, game. Yes. The lighting's incredible. A lot of really cool reflections, because of course there's fire, and then you're in a sewer, and everything's all sewagey, and then there's rain outside. So there is a little bit of level variety there as well. Yeah. I also just love the level design of that police building. Oh, it's so good. And the sound design. If you play that game in a quiet room late at night, you're bound to piss yourself. I uh, played it uh, and finished it for the first time in a cinema. Oh. I rented a theater. Wow. Yeah. That's the uh, way to do it. Yeah, and it definitely helped out with the boss fights. They are tense as hell. It does take you a little while to figure out what to do. So there's that puzzle solving element in there as well. Um, and it's also pretty good value because there are alternate stories. One thing is the A and B scenario isn't entirely one-to-one -one with the original, but I do like what the B scenario did bring because it's something else to play. You know, you finish A scenario, you got something else to play. And personally, I didn't want it to end because uh, once it ended, I was very sad because it was a game I anticipated for years it is since I was a child. Very good. I mean, there are a lot of things that they do to keep it fresh without strings yeah. so far from the original that anyone who played and loved Resident Evil 2 originally, like the both of us, it sounds like, wouldn't be upset. Yeah. And I think the updated camera was something when it was announced that I was like bothered by, but yeah. it ultimately ends up keeping it feeling really, really fresh. I agree. And adds a whole new dynamic to a familiar environment. I think <laughs> it was a wonderful spin on a classic. You mentioned the word spin. I gotta spin you out of here. Okay. Uh, goodbye, everyone. <laughs> ah! I'm happy to be here again. In second place from industry darling slash creative visionary Hideo Kojima, Death Training. <sighs> for which I also have to spin out. Good day. Goodbye, Alana. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, now Patrick's now. here. We did it. It's a fun effect that we're doing for YouTube, for you people to finish out 2019. Death Stranding, we both liked it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I we're, not, it. we're not split on this one, no. like the rest of the industry. So it's a game that's about traversal, which it basically takes one single mechanic and then focuses fully on that, which is getting across the open world. A lot of people think it's tedious. I think it's purposeful. <laughs> it is tedious. Yeah, but that's the point. I love the tedium of it. I love how it makes me suffer. No, I, I really enjoy it. You have robot legs, you have ladders, you have smoke deep uh, coys, you have blood sticky guns. blood guns, you have piss grenades. How could you not love this shit? Poop grenades too. Mm. It's this really isolating experience where you are basically, it's man versus wild, you're Norman Reedus, and you're fighting off all kinds of different enemies to deliver packages, which sounds simple because it is simple. Yeah. The story is not simple. No. I, I mean, the gameplay isn't really simple either. I would say there's so much that can go into it. So many different ways that you can tackle each delivery. Your choices definitely matter. Yeah, exactly, yeah, for sure. Out. I, I mean, last night I was playing it and I didn't bring a uh, climbing pick and it completely ruined the whole delivery. <laughs> Everything got ruined. It's a good so game for stubborn just, people. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. So I had to just like just kind of, I had to find a way to get down this mountain without killing myself. The soundtrack is great. It's super cool. It's got um, that great synth yep. sort of beat going, especially if you're on the highway. <laughs> and then it'll kick in kind of when you're like, when you know you have a long trek ahead of you. Yeah, and the lore itself is really interesting because mm -hmm. Hideo Kojima finally gets to work with a blank slate. And so I like reading through emails end game. Patrick makes fun of me for it, but it's really fascinating what he's done with this like sort of post-apocalyptic world and I'm really enjoying it even though I think the story is kind of bonkers. I like what it's set upon. I like the foundation a lot. Yeah, it's an interesting kind of look at social media too, especially with like the, the chiral network thing and how 3D printing eventually might like totally trivialize a lot of things. And we do live in a society. And we live in a society. I think the pacing of the cutscenes is really good even though there's an incredible amount of them. It, I, I get really frustrated with cutscenes in a lot of games because I want to play the game, not watch a movie. Weird. Usually. I, I enjoyed watching them for the most part. There were there weren't that many times where I was like, oh my god. I agree. Oh, it's Alana now. <laughs> 
Hi. She's back. <laughs> that was fun. I went to some in, uh, interdimensional space plane the beach. or something. Yes. So Inside Gaming's actual game of the year is the ever-punishing Souls-like Sekiro. Ooh, yes. It's beautiful. It's addictive. It's challenging in all the right ways. And aside from some issues with the camera, it's damn hard to flow. My first impression of this game, even seeing footage before I actually played it, is how pretty it is. It's colorful. It's beautiful. Yep. There are tons of varieties of environments with huge trees to swing from and giant castles. But it's also cool that a lot of the time, the way that the environment looks will indicate what kind of boss you might be heading towards. Yeah. I loved a lot of the boss fights in this game. A hundred percent. I think from software in general, I think rewards exploration in a way that a lot of games don't or do sort of They just give you sparingly. a chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is like, oh, you went way out of your way to climb this tiny thing that looked like maybe you could get to it. So you get something like substantive, like a health upgrade or something Which like that. Which is very important. But yes. it's also, it does a very good job of letting you just be curious. A lot of the time mm -hmm. I would go in a direction that I might have thought was the wrong direction because it didn't tell me where to go and then end up somewhere that I couldn't turn back from yeah. and have to face all these new enemies that I hadn't even seen before. And mm -hmm. when you're walking into one of those areas, not knowing what you're going to fight and not knowing how many of them there are going to be or how long you're going to be there for, instead of being scary, probably in part because the game's so pretty, it's yeah. just this constant sense of, oh my God, what are you going to throw at me yeah. next? And I, I know that this is a game where I would scream when I had kill the boss after yes, I've been trying yeah, for a week, for right? Sure. I would have like, like a real like, yes. It's like a huge adrenaline rush. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. it's extremely exciting. And I think that sense of wonder and discovery applies to the whole game. It also mm -hmm. has a really good score. Yep. Music's beautiful. Yep. And the story is probably a little bit less obscure than you might be used to. It's very easy to understand. It and is. Yeah. And I, I like the characters. There's yep. a lot of very interesting stuff going on. It's also really well paced. So yep. that's why Sekiro is our game of the year. So there you have it. Inside Gaming's top five games of 2019 as nominated and voted by Inside Gaming stuff. Yeah, you can't yell at us about being wrong if you have to yell at all of There's us. Too many of us. Should oh. we get on camera? Sure. Also, that's Evan. <laughs> Hi, Evan. Hi, Evan. <laughs> Welcome, Evan. Hi, Evan. But genuinely, this whole thing is meant to be celebratory, so we'd love to hear all of your opinions on the games you really love this year, too. And here's to the year of Cyberpunk. I mean, 2020. Oh, yes. I mean, 2077? Wow. Yes! <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. We'll see you next year. Bye. Yay. Wait, are we clapping? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the review for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I'm Lawrence, I played as much of the game as I possibly could, and I'm a little short on sleep because of it, but I did it for you, the gamers. I'm joined by uh, Bruce and Adam. How would you describe your relationship with From Software and the Souls series? I, I mean, in the office, Bruce and I are basically known as the Souls veterans. We're the experts. 